so here we will start with the overview of what is an embedded system first of all what is a system a system is a combination of various devices that is attached to a to perform a particular task and if we talk about an embedded system embedded system basically stands for three constraints first of all it is a combination of a software and a hardware that is we have a hardware and we'll make our program and we'll burn it our hardware second thing is it should perform a particular task and third is within a particular time limit that is if combining all these three definition we can say that embedded system is a combination of a software and a hardware which is performing a particular task within a particular time the some these are some of the aspects of an embedded system that is a system must have an embedded system must have all these constraints like it should perform operations in a real time it should it should, it should have a small size it should have a less cost so that it can reach a common common person it should be reliable enough it should be secure enough so that it cannot share the share your personal data with others these are some of the constraints which an embedded system should have first of all any system must have a system memory so that it can store the code and all other data of the system the other thing is processing speed every system must have a particular speed on which it is operating and the speed is defined by the crystal oscillator which we have put in the system thirdly it should have a limited power dissipation any device which we have made must have a limited power dissipation so that it does not heat up when we are using the device this is a embedded development cycle that is if you are required to make any kind of project or any kind of product then you have to go through all these steps like first of all you are having a particular problem you are having a specification of a product you have to make you have to select a particular tool on which you are uh, you are going to program you must have a proper software to program your code as well as to burn that code in your hardware you must have a device plan where have where you have to put your hardware in which position you have to control uh, place your controller and all other interfacing devices you have to code your program you have to test both of the modules and then integrate the software with the hardware these are the applications of an embedded system an embedded system like a mobile phone basically a mobile phone mobile phone is not an embedded system but it is a combination of various embedded system other examples are robots refrigerator microwave oven washing machine television etc then we proceed to what is a processor a processor is a heart of an embedded system it perform all the functions it has two units a control unit and an execution unit control unit sends control signals to the controller and execution unit perform the execution of all the commands which we have sent these are the types of processor a processor can be of general purpose for making any kind of product it should be it could be an application specific processor which is performing a particular task only and also it is a combination of various general purpose register to form a multi processor now processor architecture we have two type of architecture the first is harvard architecture in the harvard architecture we have ram and rom separate with separate data lines of each ram and rom but in the princeton architecture we have same data lines for the ram as well as for the rom then comes the ic technology we all know what an ic is it is a combination of various electronic components on a single silicon chip now what is moore law gordon e moore he was a co-founder of intel he gave a law in 1965 that the number of components on a single chip will get doubled in every 18 months and this law has been followed through years and it is true even today then comes the type of ic the ic can be 
PLDs that is programmable logic devices which you have to program all the functions you have to program through yourself. Semi custom is in which some of the functions are programmed earlier and some of the functions you have to program. And in full custom you cannot change the code, you cannot change the design, you have to use the IC as it is. Now embedded system architecture has a hardware, a particular software on which the hardware is running plus the application for which you have made the hardware. These are the devices that you that the embedded system should have. It should have a processor controller, it should have a memory, it should have some input and output devices, interrupts, serial boards and other devices according to your requirement. Now memory can be of two types RAM and ROM as you all as you have already know. Now memory can be of volatile or non-volatile. Volatile memory is that 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 lost that lost the data when the power supply is switched off. But in non-volatile memory, the data remains saved even if the power supply gets switched off. These are the types of ROM like PROM, programmable ROM that you can program again and again. Double E PROM is erasable programmable ROM. UV PROM, ultraviolet PROM. Double E PROM is electrical erasable programmable ROM. Now if we talk about the input devices that you can connect through your 8051 are sensors, keypad, camera, switches etc. And some of the output devices that you can connect to the embed system are LED, LCD, speakers etc. These are some other modules that you also can attach through the 8051 like Bluetooth module, Zigbee module, SPI interface, GSM interface, GPRS etc. Now OMAP, OMAP is a open multimedia application platform designed by Texas Instruments. It is a very high level platform on which we are having two type of processor on a single board like ARM processor as well as a DSP processor. Here ARM processor, this is a case study of a mobile phone you can say. This is a o OMAP like you can see here there is a ARM 11 core as well as a DSP processor also. Now in this hardware this is the hardware that is used to check the controlling of a mobile. Now the ARM processor used in a phone can be used to perform various tasks like alarm clock, calculators, media player, games, all the functions that are inbuilt in a phones. But a DSP processor is used for all the calling and video functions like GPS, calling functions, video chat, conferencing, messaging services, Bluetooth, GPRS etc. Thank you.